Hello, I'm Kyle, and this is Give Paws Hobby, the channel where I stop to appreciate the things I love to fill my free time with. Um, for today, we have something exciting. Uh, it's the first Winding the Gears episode in quite some time um, because the most recent uh, Clockwork expansion has been codified, has been published, is out in the wild, as is, and Winding the Gears is all about the stuff that's not quite finished yet. Um, so, uh, no, just to get it out of the way <clears throat> right off the bat, no, this is not uh, me tipping my hat that there is new better bot project stuff yet. Um, not to rush anybody, there's a ton of great work going on in all sectors, um, and whenever better bot project gets new stuff, you can be sure it'll be here uh, as soon as it comes out. Um, what this is, is the first in a series of videos to take you on a tour of what some of the community members have created um, to allow us to use some of the new Marauder expansion. Um, specifically, the in this video, the landmarks and the root bots. Um, now, originally, this video was going to be the landmarks and the hirelings, um, made specifically by uh, a community member by the name of S. Um, I'm putting it up on the screen right now, but I recorded uh, everything and is sometimes the case. I realize this is way too long for one video and I don't know if I'm gonna be able to get it out in time. And sometimes as a teacher, for those who don't know, I am a teacher at my day job. Um, you come up with a lesson plan that lo and behold is actually two. And sometimes you find that out a couple days ahead of teaching it. Sometimes you find it out when you're reviewing it right before you teach it. Sometimes you find that out in the middle of the lesson plan when you get about halfway through and it's not done. So uh, yeah, I figured it out, I guess, in between those final two um, and split it up. So this is going to be a <clears throat> more manageable video uh, just on the landmarks. And then next week, <clears throat> excuse me, will be the video about all of the hirelings. Um, now what S did, I'll talk a little bit more about uh, the hireling side of things, um, but from the landmark perspective, they have these uh, cards, almost the exact same size as the regular landmarks, um, and they don't have the setup on there, uh, but you just use the landmark card, um, the setup side, and then when you would flip it over to just the rules side, instead you use one of these because what's really handy about um, how S did this is it has the rules of the card, the normal landmark card already on it, but then it also has a sentence or a little paragraph or whatever it takes to give you the bot's perspective. Now that's, <clears throat> spoiler, that's not the case for the hirelings. The hirelings you'll need to have um, for S's uh, solution, which not, you know, I, other ones have worked differently. For this one, um, you'll need to print out the hireling cards and then have them alongside their kind of bigger sibling, the, the regular human hireling cards. And then if a robot has control of it, you just put the hireling one on top. Um, but yeah, landmarks, I think, are, uh, it's kind of a nice on-ramp to hirelings anyways. It's uh, throwing in an X factor into your game that's kind of been around since the ferry and the tower. It's just been uh, put into, you know, a nice tidy rule set and gets a bunch of buddies here. So it makes sense to do this first. It's also a little bit easier um, because the, the bot interactions are more global. Um, the hirelings become really kind of fiddly for each hireling. Uh, some similarities, but lots of differences. So without any further ado, let's dive into um, these actual landmarks. And before we do that, I'm gonna go back in time, change my outfit, uh, and go to the original video because this was all filmed uh, with the hireling stuff. So I'm going to go back to previous Kyle, who had no idea I was gonna split this up into two videos. All right, so we're gonna start off with uh, our landmarks, um, which are pretty simple. They're modifiers on the whole map. They're not adding in new factions or new pieces like that. Just a quick reminder. So if you want to use these, um, you're going to choose uh, one or two. Uh, typically I've been using one if I use one at all. 
Um, then you're going to, if you want to get the full effect, shuffle all the landmark cards, deal out as many as you want to play with. Um, and then the person in last order, uh, play order, is going to set up the landmark uh, unless there are two, in which case the first last player set up the first, second to last player will set up the other one. Um, they can't be battled. Uh, they are never in control by any player, um, that sort of stuff. So that's out of the way. Let's get to, um, I'm going to start with one that you're probably the most familiar with, the fairy. Um, so the fairy is going to uh, get set up in uh, clearing on the river or the lake uh, on the lake map. It cannot have a landmark or be adjacent to one. Um, then you're going to flip this card over. Once per turn, a player taking a move from the ferry's clearing can move to an adjacent clearing along the river, moving the ferry as well. Um, uh, it says follow normal movement rules. After taking this move, that player draws a card. So um, the ferry for the bots is pretty simple. Um, and what I do like about these landmark cards is they do incorporate the rules for human human players, but also then the bots. Um, so this one is, uh, you know, players, human players are going to do the same thing. The bots use the ferry following normal movement rules, treating the ferry as if the clearing with the ferry and all other coastal clearings were linked by a path. Um, then they score one victory point instead of drawing a card as normal for bots. So. Um, Pretty simple, doesn't change the priority, um, just opens up, if they're at the clearing with the ferry, opens up the ability to actually use that um, like uh, the humans could. And then since they never draw a card, they just get victory points. That's on there. It doesn't need to be on there because that's part of like the overall bot rules. Anytime they would gain a card, they just draw or they get a victory point. But it's nice to have a reminder. Um, next up, the other one you're probably familiar with, the tower. Um, so the tower, uh, you can go in any clearing that has a ruin, um, cannot have a landmark. Uh, that's the setup. At the end of the player's evening, if they rule the tower's clearing, they score one victory point. And if you don't know, um, the tower nicely seats uh, a little meeple up on top of it to show who uh, is in control of it. So there you go. That's fun. Um, so on the bot tower, that part is still there. When a bot attempts to target a clearing based on highest or lowest priority, whatever their, their faction board says, the clearing with the tower will always meet this condition. Bots will likely target the pass and then it will win all tiebreakers. Um, and then down in the corner, it says for bots, the tower, legendary forge, and lost city always win priorities. And when tied with each other, they once again rely on priority. So um, because the bots, you're not going to like totally reprogram them to understand that there is a new way to get victory points in the game. Um, however, by making it, you know, whether the highest or lowest, oh my gosh. The highest or lowest priority, depending on what the bot cares about, that means they're more than likely going to be uh, moving into that clearing, which will give them the semblance of playing under the same assumption that the other players have. Like, this is an important clearing. Um, but just like the human players, at the end of a bot's turn, if it's in control of that clearing, if it rules it, then it gets a victory point. Um, all right, so moving on uh, to another one in that category, the Lost City. So set up, place Lost City landmark in a clearing on the river. Uh, it cannot have a landmark or be adjacent to one. And then Lost City clearing is treated as being fox, mouse, and rabbit suits. And then it gives examples for what that could mean. So it is all suits as uh, symbolized by having all three of the suit markers on the piece itself. So this one is simple. Um, it, it's just the same rules. Nothing changes except um, that we talked about before. This is one of the three that counts as highest or lowest priority in whatever you know situation it would need to. And then if there are multiples, um, say you know if Lost City and the Tower are adjacent, both adjacent to a clearing that the Vagabot is in, um, or maybe that's not a good example because the Vagabot will never rule, but. Um, I suppose it would still go there. But any bot is adjacent to both of them. Um, so they both 
are tied for highest or lowest priority. And at that point, then you break the tie between those two, between what actual priority those clearings have. It's a little bit, just a teeny bit fiddly, but actually not that bad. Uh, next up, Legendary Forge. Place landmark in a clearing, cannot have a landmark or be adjacent to one. Remove the items below from the item supply on the map based on the suit of the Legendary Forge's clearing. Um, once you've flipped over the card, you're going to put those four items on here. To craft an item on this card, you must have a faction piece at the Legendary Forge, and you still follow crafting rules. Whenever you craft an item on this card, draw a card and score an extra point. So, um, that all exists. However, bots can still craft an item from here for one point. Uh, that, and, and that's to say, wherever they're out on the map. This says they can craft whatever is on here. They are not limited to only being able to craft it on the space of the forge. However, if they have a faction piece on, at the legendary forge, they score an extra point. So it's both creating extra scarcity for the other players, but also rewarding them if they uh, do have a piece here. And to facilitate that, remember, this is the third of three that have that always highest or lowest priority. So there's a good chance that the bots will be gravitating towards um, that clearing. All right, next up, legendary or elder treetop, or not recommended for true player games. Set up, place it in a uh, uh, treetop landmark in a corner clearing. It cannot have a landmark or be adjacent to one. The elder treetop adds a building slot to its clearing. Whenever a player removes an enemy building from the elder treetop slot, they score an extra point. So it expands the amount of buildings that a uh, uh, location can have however um, is at a potential cost if you get a building removed from it you're going to uh, uh, give the enemy uh, extra points so whenever uh, that's that's all the same however down below for bots defenders with a building on the elder treetop win all tiebreakers for bot battles and bots will only build uh, on in on the elder treetop as a last resort um, so it always, whoever has something on Elder Treetop, doesn't matter what the normal defender tiebreakers are, they're going to shoot for the player who has something in the treetop slot, and um, it just helps them, you know, all other building slots are equal, this is the one that's different, and so it's saying that it will only build on the treetop in a last case scenario, or last dish effort. Uh, all right, so last up for the landmarks is the black market. Set up the black market uh, landmark in a clearing that has exactly one building slot and no ruin. It cannot have a landmark or be adjacent to one. Draw three item, or three cards, but do not look at them. Place them face down next to the black market card. Once per turn, a player with a faction piece at the black market may swap any one face down card next to the black market with a card from their hand, placing it face down. Remember, see, they're not looking at this face down card. They're just saying, I don't like this card from my hand. I'm going to try to get it to be something better. So that all is true. But then also, if a bot ever has pieces in this clearing on its turn, they choose a random card, they choose a card at random and discard it from the black market uh, little you know, market. Uh, if it's an item card, score one point. Replace the card with a new one from the deck. So when you discard the card, you're going to briefly look at it to see if it's an item card. Um, if it is, you they, the bot scores a point, um, and whether it is or it's not, the card gets replaced with a face down item. Um, so it's just kind of uh, you know, if, if people aren't regularly going to the black market to take things from it um, and potentially lose track of what they've put in and what other players have put in and all that, it kind of sits there and doesn't do all that much. So it just gives the bots functionality to interact with it in kind of a fun way. Um, to potentially pull out those cards that either would be good or uh, players are just putting junk in there um, and the bot might get rid of that junk and replace it with something that's not. So it gives players encouragement to come back and check out that uh, the black market every so often. All right, so that's uh, the landmark video for today. Um, I, like I said at the top, I think these are 
uh, uh, really easy to implement into the game. Um, they mix up the the experience of whatever it is you're, wherever you're playing whatever factions are involved um, really easy to implement and I think this is a great job um, having having this like rootbot version of them um, I think some of them are perfectly sensible uh, the t the fairy the tower um, you know lost city I like how lost city the legendary forge and the tower all break whatever ties are necessary. I think the black market is nice because it um, helps stir things up there to make it so it's always kind of interesting as if the bots been in there recently, like, ooh, I wonder what the new cards are. And then Elder Treetop, I think makes perfect sense. It's an extra, it's, it's what it says on the tin. It's an extra build space um, that you want to use last um, because if you get pulled out of the, the treetop, you know you're going to give someone else victory points for it so it all works really well super easy to print out um for those who are excited about hirelings sorry come back next week and we will have that video too so until then hope you have some great games of root um thanks for taking a pause with give pause and i will see you next time